hold on to your hats, folks, because today we are shaking it up in between the ears. I am so excited to introduce Brenda Johnston. And yes, there is a T in there, and I will never forget that. And it's somebody that I actually got to meet in person, which is even better. So welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I also want to point out, you are one of the few people who makes a point to say it's with a T because my growing up, I know it sounds so weird, but this is about storytelling, right? Growing up, people would always mispronounce my last name. It'd be John Sun or John Stone. And I got in the habit. I was always like, it's John Stone with a T, but no E. Okay. <laughs> and now everyone listening, you know, the power of storytelling because you will never forget how to spell Brenda's name. And when you go to look for her later, you'll know where to find her. Being said, Brenda does a lot of magical things. She actually helps me multiple times a day with four minutes. And if you don't have four minutes to get yourself back in your body, like, I don't know who you are or why you're there, like you have the time. But I want to talk about what was that moment when you decided to start your podcast? Because we're all podcasters here. You've been doing it for a while. You're doing it on your own and you still keep going. So I want to know the story. I wish I had some glamorous story to tell you. It was 2019. I had just left my corporate job in 2018, I believe. And I had a business coach and it was podcasts were really starting to be a thing. And one of the things that really helped me kind of get out of corporate and like be inspired were these podcasts I was listening to business podcasts and all these things. And I was like, I would love one day to do a podcast. But in my head, the story I was telling myself was that's only for really fancy people. Like I had no idea, you know, essentially anybody can set up a podcast. So I was working with a business coach and she had a podcast and she had me on her podcast and we started talking about things. And she was like, you know, you should have a podcast. And I, my intention with starting the podcast originally was because I like to talk and I hate video. So in my head, I was like, well, if I start a podcast, then I don't have to be on like YouTube or do video stuff because reels weren't out yet. Like, so my intention was, okay, I'm going to use this podcast to be able to reach more people, to be able to tell stories and teach on a bigger scale. Like I can talk longer. I didn't have a clear strategy. So I would say for the first probably two seasons, I was throwing spaghetti at the wall. I had no idea what to talk about. I had all the equipment. That part's easy. But I would sometimes show up twice a month. Sometimes it'd be once a month. Like it was just all over the place. And so now when people are like, I'm binging your content and I'm starting at season one, I'm like, oh, God, please don't. But I have gone back to listen to those episodes and I've seen my growth. So my original feeling was that I just want to be able to help more people. And I felt like the podcast could do that. But oddly enough, I didn't promote the damn podcast. Like I wasn't sending out emails promoting it. I barely talked about it on social media, but people were still listening. So I don't know how that was happening. And now it's evolved. Obviously, I show up every week, once a month. I've got a spe like a special affirmation audio program for people to use and get a taste of kind of like what I do. And I love knowing that what I'm putting out there is actually helping people. And I know it's helping people because I get messages from people and getting those messages like, oh, I found your podcast because I heard you on somebody else's show and now I've binged your content or whatever it is, that's why I keep doing this because I love being able to serve those people. But also in a strange way, I kind of feel like it's a bit of therapy for me as well. If that sounds weird, I don't know. So my original intent was to help people, but I had no strategy and I was throwing spaghetti at the wall, but I'm still I love, here. I love that. And the fact that you're still here and your show is the limitless life. I mean, come on, that's what we all want. I think you you put in two very specific things is like serving others, but the healing part of 
podcasting. And this is one of my, my specialties is I truly think that podcasting is a healing modality. It's therapy. I have a second show that I will never say the name of. I will never tell anybody who it is. I have a voice disguiser on. And I talk about all the things that are so controversial that I just don't want to ever have a two-way conversation. That podcast has grown much faster than anything else because of that vulnerability piece. So Mm -hmm. I want to know during that first two seasons where you were throwing spaghetti, you were showing up here and there, did you ever get stuck in the number hole? Like how many downloads you were getting or was it really just something you were doing because you were trying to serve? Oh my God. I absolutely got stuck in the number hole. (laughs) I was like, Oh my God, I have a hundred downloads. Like to me, that was amazing because I didn't know what was possible for a podcast. Like I just didn't know. I didn't even think about like monetizing it. And like, that wasn't even to be honest. And you and I had this conversation when we met person, I was like, I still, that's not even my goal (laughs) with this. I'm like, I have no idea how I'd monetize it. But I really just, it was funny because I was putting my voice out there and I wanted to help the people, but then I also had this weird belief about putting myself out there. And like, what if my parents hear this? Or what if Sally Joe from high school hears this? It was a weird visibility block that I had to work through. And I also had imposter syndrome type of beliefs where it was like, well, who am I to be talking about this? Who am I to have a podcast? (laughs) Like everybody can have a podcast. Everybody has a voice. It was just being able to really step into that and figuring out what the heck the show was really going to be about. Because to be honest, I've grown immensely in the last however many years since I've had the podcast and I'm very spiritual, but I'm always like, I'm also very business. I like to teach based on what I've experienced. And so I, I didn't want it to seem airy fairy and I didn't want it to seem too businessy. So I didn't know how to combine those things because I also didn't know who I was at the time. I hadn't stepped into this version of me yet. And now this version of me knows exactly what I do and exactly what I talk about. And I'm not afraid to talk about the energy stuff or the subconscious mind stuff. Like it's, it's about finding who I was. And now the show is also a reflection of that, I think, I feel like. (laughs) And that's a really good point because a lot of people that listen to the show are those multi-passionates, you know? When people heard heard my story, like you want to combine mindset work, tapping, art therapy with healing and podcasting to grow your business, like crazy. But I think that what you don't realize, like what I see is that you've created this platform that you don't, you say you don't know how to monetize, but exactly what you're doing is monetizing because you're allowing your audience to get to know you on a deeper level, which you're the subconscious strategist. So I know that you know the power of your story and your voice. And can you share a little bit about like what you do and how that now I just, you know, broke that piece in your brain. Like, how do you think it actually, you are setting yourself up to monetize through serving without focusing on the money? I honestly think it has a lot to do with what you just said. It's like people get a chance to get to know me. Some of the biggest downloads are the shows where I've gone on and just been like, listen, man, I haven't been showing up. Life's been a shit show. I went through this And now I'm back and I'm ready to focus. And this is what I want to do for you. And so I just, and it's the same reason I listen to podcasts because I want to get to know the person. There's something about sitting with someone virtually through the phone or whatever and hearing their voice and hearing them speak. And it helps you really get to know who they are. It's like, for me, listening to other people's podcasts, it feels more intimate than like some weird video that's two minutes long. And I really think, I mean, I've had people reach out and be like, I joined your expansion group coaching community because I've been listening to your podcast for two years. And I just like what you're saying. I had a woman, she's one of my, she's amazing. It's one of my one-on-one clients. And she's also in my community. She's like, I've been listening to you for like two years. And then finally I was like, I need to friggin' work with you. And I was like, this is amazing. All from the podcast. 
So, I mean, I guess you're right <laughs> in a way that is monetizing it, but that's not my main intention. My intention is I like to break through the fluffy bullshit. Am I allowed to swear on here? Yes, you are. <laughs> I like to break through the bullshit of the mindset stuff that's out there, of the spiritual stuff that's out there, of the energy work that's out there, because I'm tired of seeing people getting taken advantage of. And so I'm over here being like, I'm calling bullshit on that (laughs) based on my own experiences. And I'm not calling people out and being a dork. I was going to say a douche, but like, I'm I'm just... I'm just tired of seeing people getting taken advantage of by fantasy marketing. And during when the world closed down, everybody and their grandma became a life coach and everybody became a podcaster. And as much as I love seeing people step out and doing the things, I don't love it if you're taking advantage of people. Yeah. A lot of that has happened and that fantasy marketing. I think, I think that's a huge role that why so many podcasts die and don't make it past seven episodes. You know, that it's the numbers like, oh my goodness, I only have a hundred downloads. You were the opposite. Most people that look at a hundred downloads, they're like, I'm failing. And I'm like, actually, let's look at the stats. Like if you are over a hundred downloads, you are already in the top 60%. Like if you were over 200 downloads, now we're up to like 90%. <laughs> like those people yeah, getting you- thousands of downloads, that's not the norm. And it was really cool because somebody told me about the site you can go to to see where your uh, podcast shows up like globally and I'm like in the top five percent my goal is to be like the top two percent but that was exciting to me because then I was like oh shit people are listening to this like people are listening and so then that inspires me to keep going and keep showing up and keep doing the thing and it's funny because now we talk about getting caught in the numbers game I look at other people's shows and they've got like 300 episodes or 500 episodes and I'm like oh I've only just got over 100 because I wasn't showing up consistently and now I am so that's where I get in my head and I'm I'm like oh maybe I'm behind because I don't have enough episodes like that's where I get caught and I I know that that's weird and dumb but that's the story I tell (laughs) and we're a great storyteller to to block us from that you were talking about like that fear of visibility and I think that that's one of the other things is you weren't sharing your show you aren't you know like I still see things that like when I look at your show I'm like man she needs to share this more often because she can make this like blow up because it's it's so helpful you know like I jokingly in the beginning of this mentioned the four minute thing and you have this guided again it's something that is in your ear there's got to be something special about the difference between watching a youtube video and listening to a podcast is there a difference like on a subconscious mind from somebody who is like i don't know subconscious mind but like is there a difference for us of why it seems more impactful so there's a couple things and it also depends on the person because if you're a visual learner you're going to like seeing the person more, but having somebody in your ear, it's, I'm essentially bypassing your conscious mind and we're just talking directly to your subconscious mind. So it's like, it's a little bit more intimate again. It's like, oh, I'm listening specifically. You're con- it's almost like, oh, I'm losing my voice. It's almost like you are more focused on the listening in some moments And then what do we all do? We multitask, right? So then we're multitasking. Your subconscious is still hearing the information. Now with the four and a half minute thing, it's designed to help you be still for four and a half minutes. No multitasking while you do that because most people can't sit still. We don't like to be still. We don't like to be in the stillness. And most people avoid the subconscious work because they're afraid of what's going to come up. And that's not how it works. Like, yeah. It's very, it's fascinating to me. I don't know if I just rambled or I actually answered your question, but I feel like it's, we like to listen to things because we know we can multitask and our ear, our subconscious is still getting information. I mean, I would rather people not multitask, but you know, (laughs) did you know, fun fact about that, excuse me, our subconscious minds, like we're not actually meant to multitask. So when I worked in corporate and they're like, multitasking is a superpower. Not really. Your conscious mind, like 
we're meant to focus on one thing at a time. That's a whole other podcast episode, but it's a little fun fact for you. (laughs) I'm like, that just broke my brain a little bit. I'm like, okay, yeah, we've been, I think that it goes back to everything that we've been trained so much to, to be a certain way to do a certain thing that it's, it's creating podcasts like yours. It's creating that dinner daily energy practice, which don't worry guys, I will put it in girls. I'll put it in the show notes for you because it's magical. I do it in between every, almost every activity that I do for clients. Cause I mean, I edit a lot of podcasts every day for clients and I need different energy between each one of them. I don't know how I would do it without that four minutes. Let's just get re reinvigorate this energy to this next level energy that I have. But a lot of people, especially entrepreneurs and people in business don't realize what makes you more powerful is managing your energy. Your energy speaks before your mouth even opens. And that's the same with the podcast. If I was sitting behind the mic talking about things that maybe I really didn't know about or didn't feel good to me, you wouldn't listen to my podcast because you'd feel the disconnect. You'd feel the inauthentic energy and you'd be like, ew, I don't want to listen to this. It's gross. And I know people listening to this have heard people where they're like, oh, I I can't even listen to this person. My other paranoia was I needed to have good quality audio because for me, I cannot listen to a podcast that has shitty audio. I'm out. If you sound like you're talking through a tin can, bye. (laughs) And it doesn't have to be expensive. That's one of the Mm -hmm. things my industry does that irritates the hell out of me is they're like, buy all these things. And it's like, you don't really need that. I've got like a $50 microphone. It sounds great. You know, and then, you know, you get on these trends where somebody's like, oh, this microphone is so great. And it's like the worst microphone known on the market, but it's now cutesy and it's a trend. And then all my clients are sending me audio from here. And I'm like, guys, it's like that tin can. I'm like, at least put the right settings on your mics. Like, yeah, it, well, I think my first mic was a snowball and it actually sounded pretty good. I think it was a hundred bucks, but like for what I was doing, it was cute. My boyfriend bought it for me. I was like, I felt fancy. <laughs> Had yeah. a boom arm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I do love the boom arm because I am a hand talker. And when I, before I had that, I was always bumping it. And that, again, it, it throws off the audio. And I think that, you know, from somebody who works a lot in the subconscious mind, being conscious of those kind of things is important, you know, cause it's, it's not only like the quality, but it's the quality of what you're saying, because we can really jack with people's heads, which I think is the whole fantasy marketing aspect. Yeah, it's also because one of the main tools I use with people is hypnosis. And I'm trained in hypnosis. I've got over 200 hours of like in clinic work before I was even certified. And I think like this is our mind. Okay. So listening to things on YouTube and all this, that's cool. I don't do that anymore because I don't know what the intention of the people who created the things are. I don't know what their energy was like the wording of things is very important. And so even with my affirmation programs that come out on the podcast once a month, they're written in a specific way to not cause subconscious conflicts. And what I mean by that is on a conscious level, if we believe something or we're trying to convince ourselves of something, but subconsciously we don't believe it, that's where we run into trouble. So if I'm sitting here going, I have a million dollar business. I have a million dollar business, but I know that I don't. My subconscious is going to be like, you're full of shit. (laughs) So there's these loopholes we can use. And I use them when I write the affirmations. I don't recommend generic affirmations to anybody. You have to have, and it's funny because some people don't like the word affirmation because it reminds them of like Stuart Smalley from Saturday Night Live in the 80s. I don't know if you know who that is. I'm good enough. I'm what? Anyways, you can Google it. Affirmation simply means you are affirming information. Can you change a subconscious belief just by using affirmations? No, it's very hard because it's a conscious level thing. Can you change the stories you're telling yourself? Yes. So these loopholes, it's like, if you say, I am the type of person that your subconscious mind goes, oh yeah, I totally believe that because it's a present moment statement. Your subconscious lives in the present moment. And this is where people run into trouble because they try to create these intentions and all these things. Like, again, I have a multi-million dollar business or I am this or I am that. Well, no, your subconscious doesn't believe it. 
So when you say I'm the type of person that I'm in the process of, or I am choosing to, your subconscious mind is like, yeah, that is us. We're doing that. And it helps you tell better stories and it helps you take better actions, which helps you create new behaviors. It's really hard to change subconscious stuff, just doing surface level things. (laughs) And so when I'm working with people, we're doing things that are getting into the subconscious mind, like hypnosis, which bypasses your conscious mind. We, I have a technique where we put you in whole brain state, meaning we are able to access both hemispheres of your mind at once. It enables us to shift and change beliefs. So your subconscious and your nervous system feel safe to change. Like we're checking your nervous system and your body for trapped emotional energy we're in there i always say i like to get in and get out i don't want to be trying to change beliefs for like five years (laughs) who's got time for that i don't why it's like no and i'm not saying this is easy sometimes we come up against stuff that it's like oh that's interesting like this i've been divorced for i think 12 years And this Christmas, I recently had some stuff come up with my ex-husband that I had to go in and clear. It was trapped emotional energy. This is what people don't understand. We don't need to go looking for things. Our subconscious mind will bring them to the surface when it is time for us to deal with them. And so that's one of the things I'm always telling people is like, you don't constantly have to keep fixing yourself because you're not broken. And it's really easy to get trapped in a healing loop. And it's really easy to start a podcast and start talking about things you don't fully understand because you've had like one experience. And I see that a lot out there. And I think that's another reason why it's so important to me to keep doing my podcast so that people understand, like, it's really easy to give your power away to people. And I don't, I don't want people doing that. I want people connecting to themselves and connecting to their own intuition and connecting to their own power. So that they can show up authentically and they can create podcasts and educate people. Like, you know what I mean? I just ranted again. I go on these, I get really angry when I know people are getting taken care of or taken advantage of. <laughs> and and I feel that. And that's one of the reasons why, again, we've moved this show from cure to pop from cure for pod fade to your store, your podcast. I'm like, what's my name of my new show? Your podcast is so much life rest. <laughs> Cause there's the book also, but I think that this is, this is the conversations that I've been enjoying having is that we really have this, this tool, this, this powerful tool that is podcasting to share our messages and you can amplify the shit or you can amplify something different. Like it is such a powerful way to shift people's perspective because again, you were talking about that multitasking. But I forget who I was talking to. It may have even been you. And it's like multitasking, like driving somewhere and you miss an exit. And I think it was you that we were talking about this. Like, that's a state of hypnosis. And I'm like, well, well, shit. Okay. No wonder whatever I'm listening to at the time has stuck in my head, even though I've missed my exit because I was got to get off an exit early because I was going somewhere else today. And I think that that we need to be careful with what we attach ourselves to for one, to not be taken advantage of. And two, maybe unintentionally taking advantage of somebody. If you're a good person. Now, if you just want to take advantage of people, cause you want to be like mega rich and you know, like you don't care how you get there. Like karma will get you. Karma will get you. <laughs> yeah. And like I said, energy speaks before your mouth even opens. So if your only focus is making money, good luck with that. It's not people. I mean, you will make money, but you're not going to be making it in the way you want to make it unless you're a jerk but that thing you just mentioned where we're driving and it's like oh man I don't even remember driving here we go in and out of hypnosis like multiple times a day hundreds of times a day and people don't realize that you can be listening to music that has lyrics you're literally programming your mind you're programming how you feel I heard a song the other day and I've heard it a million times, but for some reason I heard, I heard the lyrics and it was something to the effect of like, I killed my ex-boyfriend and his girlfriend because I was better than being alone. And I was like, what is this shit? And it's like a popular song that's out there. And I was talking to my friend. I'm like, what, 
what is it? Like, this is the stuff the young people are listening to. This is the stuff we listen to and we don't even realize what we're listening to. And then we wonder, why am I depressed? Why am I anxious? Why am I mad? (laughs) Because you have to be mindful of what you're consuming, not just visually, but also through your ear holes. Like be mindful. Your brain is the biggest, it's a huge muscle. People just don't, like we have to work with it. Like it's one of the most, our mind is one of the most powerful tools we have. And our subconscious mind gets demonized a lot because people are like, oh, limiting beliefs, blah, blah, blah. I'm not saying we don't have limiting beliefs, but when you learn to work with your subconscious mind, which is what I do with people, when you learn to speak to it and yourself in different ways, it becomes the best partner that you have, the best tool. It is like a super human computer and we get to like decide how we want to work with it. How does it get any better than that? It's like, wow, that's really cool that we can do that. Yeah. It, it just, there's so, there's so many things that come up for me, like in like how we program and how we consume and how we respond also. Cause mm-hmm. I think, you know, like one of the reasons I love having a podcast is like that response, like, like the ability to respond. It can't, you have to actually think about something. So you have to be heated enough to like make, a, like if you're angry about something or you, you know, like the trolls and all of those things that mess with our minds. I really feel like podcasting is almost like a safety zone where you can like, I'm going to slowly break out of this little cocoon that is, you know, the shelter that I put up for social media where you're starting to like peel back and you're like, oh, can I come out? Can I come out? Can I come out? How about about a little bit more? And I think that, where was I going? My brain just was like, nope, we're thinking about butterflies now. Here we go. Welcome to Jet Spray. Squirrel. I say that. I'm like, squirrel. Red bird. <laughs> but like, as we come out, there's this safety that's in a podcast that I don't think is anywhere else because it's harder to like poke the bear basically and say you suck, but it's also harder to get praised. So I want to know because you've had your show for a long time. Like you mentioned like, oh, I only have a, whatever, hundred episodes, whatever. <laughs> that's great. You want to know what that the refrain of that is for you? It's like, holy fucking shit, I'm still on the air. You're pretty yeah, about. <laughs> and that's true. It is looking at, and I started reframing that because I heard one of your episodes talking about how people only last to like seven episodes. I was like, that's I probably actually did say, holy fucking shit, I'm still here and I'm still going. And the show is growing. Like it's growing like wildfire. <laughs> so yeah. It's very interesting and it did feel safer to be behind a microphone, not be on video and kind of come out. And now I actually talk about my show versus years ago when I maybe didn't ever really tell people about it. And just, I guess I was just hoping people would listen. I don't know what, I don't know what was going on. Maybe people will listen to it. (laughs) That if I build it, they will come. Yeah. That's not how it works, by the way, for anybody wanting to start a podcast out there. The growth part is a lot, is a lot. But I also think that like it's growing like weeds right now because you don't have the focus of like, how do I monetize this? I truly, when I look at the shows that are chocked full of over promotions or sponsors and things like that I'm like you are paying to grow like you you think you're being paid to grow but you are really painstakingly paying to grow because it it doesn't feel like service anymore and your listenerships go down but when you when you stand up and say like no I'm breaking the industry I'm being safe to be seen in this whatever weirdness I'm breaking into this industry you know podcasting is a healing modality you know things like that it's okay. You can be like clearly weird and find your people. And I think that it also allows you to connect with other humans. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is it wasn't until the last year that I would even promote my own stuff. And I would have people reach out and go, well, how can I work with you? (laughs) And so now I'll talk about like, I have a couple spots open for one-on-one or I'll talk about a program I'm running or I'll talk, but it's like, I'm still not the greatest at it because I make it very short and I'm like, 
I kind of weave it into what I'm talking about. But I also understand like you can't build a business. Secret businesses don't have success. Like you have to talk about what you do and how you help people. And I recognize that part of like when I was listening to podcasts, I just wanted to hear how I could work with them. And there is a podcast, I'm a, like a cult podcast that I listen to, and I still really like it, but oh my Lanta, they've got promos at the beginning of it, in the middle of it, at the end of it. And I feel like it's just a big commercial and I'm it turn, I'm like, I don't even want to listen to this anymore. So that's, that goes back to the like energy speaks before your mouth, even almost, I'm just like, okay, I understand running a podcast takes money, right? Like it's time money, whatever. So I understand that this is what they're doing for a living and they have to have sponsors. But at the same time, I'm just kind of like, I don't like that. (laughs) Yeah. And a lot of the listeners don't. And so there has to be that like fine balance. That's one of the things like, I love teaching and like what you just said, it's like, I'm really bad at it because I'm like, hey guys, did you know you could get a free 30 minute podcast audit with me? Podcasting.com. Okay. Now we're on with it. And it's like, like, did you guys catch that? Like you just, I just told you that you could to get free 30 minutes with me, but like I went through it so fast and this is one of the places that a lot of podcasts miss the mark. And for those, you know, that are listening, like, okay, I want I want a pod fade away because I'm not making money from it. Like, the side effect of being able to story sell. So like you said, weave it in. I was working with a client. Oh, you know, like, and I do have a space for one more person. Yeah, It doesn't have to be some like, pardon the interruption. I have this really cool thing that you have to pay attention to. And by the time you get that, it's an energy thing for me. By the time you get back to the episode, I've lost the excitement about the episode because now you've just blatantly like, my mind has snapped out of whatever you were telling me. Now I'm annoyed. And then when it comes back on, I'm like, is this really something I want to listen to? And most of the time I fade off because it's like that. Whoosh. Yeah. And it's, so here's another subconscious belief I had that was like around me not being worthy to show up in the podcast world because I would hear these shows and somebody would be talking and then there'd be like this, like kind of they're talking and then there's like a little like bumper music and then there's an ad like placed right in the middle of the episode. And I was like, am I supposed to be doing that? Like, am I not, is my podcast not professional enough? Cause I'm not doing that. And I had to really sit with it. And I was like, no, that doesn't even feel good to me. Like intuitively, that didn't feel good to me to do that. I was like, I'm not doing that. And it's funny because if you go back, you'll hear in some of the episodes where I've kind of scripted what I'm supposed to say about promoting. So you can feel it because I'm uncomfortable. And now I just talk. I'm just like, like I said, I weave it in. It's not like a special announcement (laughs) because that weirds me out. I don't like doing that. It doesn't feel good to me. And that's the cool thing. It's like, you get to do what feels good to you. Like there's so many triggers that come up around us all day. And I know I'm not the only one that's like, oh shit, I should be doing this, 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 because Sally told me to. And it's like, well, Sally might have a team behind her now. So she could do all those things. Like sometimes the simplest thing of like, it's showing up, where can I show up the most to serve today? That's what's going to grow your business. That's what's going to grow your happiness. I'm assuming that's what's going to lead to my limitless life, right? Can I tell you a fun story about how I named it? Yes. So I was really, really trying to figure out what is this podcast going to be named? And I actually have the word limitless tattooed on my side, on my left side. It's huge. And I remember walking my dog and I was talking to myself and I'm like, what am I supposed to call this show? And it was like, it dropped into the top of my head. And I remembered what I had tattooed on the side of me. I was like, limitless oh my, it's the limitless life. That's what this is about. Because essentially that's what I'm helping people create. Limitless lives, amazing businesses. Like it was based on my tattoo. That's how I named it. People are like, oh, it's some like profound thing. Nope. It was named based on my tattoo. But then the the question to follow that is why did you have that tattooed on you? Like what's the story behind the tattoo? Oh, I'll tell you. So when I, so I was, with my ex-husband for 18 years we'd been married for 15 years we ended up getting divorced when I was 38 and I ended up leaving my corporate job four years after that and I said to myself I'm never 
going to settle ever again in my life. And I told myself that the possibilities are limitless. And so I've always been the type of person, like all my tattoos mean something. I have belief or believe written on my wrist, but in another language, like I just, I wanted a reminder that I was limitless, that life is limitless, that everything is limit. There are the only limits we have are the ones we put on ourselves. So it was a gift to myself after I'd gotten divorced and then quit my corporate job. I was like, I want this reminder every day that I get to be limitless and nobody gets to tell me otherwise. It's one of my favorite words, limitless. And how cool that tattoo, like, is what you're bringing to the world. Like, that story, like, that piece right there, there is, like, if you guys want to know how to market, there it is right there. What does the story behind it? Because now I'm sure that all of you listening are like, holy, I need to get over to the limitless life because I want that. You can feel that. You can feel that in the tone. You can feel that in the energy of sharing. And that is the power of storytelling to, like, connect with people. And that's what growing a business is all about. It's not about how many followers or downloads you have. It's like, who did I connect with today? And it is the connection piece. And this year I've realized, well, it started last year. I would have people having conversations with me in Instagram or whatever. And they would say things like, it's on my vision board to be a guest on your podcast one day. And I was like, what? That's amazing. And so I'm bringing more people on to tell their stories. I'm even bringing more of my clients on to tell their stories because that's how you connect more people. I love hearing real people stories. And so I was like, I, I love hearing real people stories. I want to bring real people stories on whether it's people who've worked with me, whether it's people like you, whether it's people like This is the most fun I have when I have interviews with people, either for their shows or for my show, because you learn so much. It's in a funny way, almost like free coaching. Don't tell people that. (laughs) No, I know, right? (laughs) That's our little secret. (laughs) It is. It's just so fun to have these conversations and be like, huh, that's an interesting way to look at that. That's a cool way to reframe that. I love it. That's why I love my podcast. And I love being consistent. And people are like, don't you ever run out of ideas? Sometimes I get in my head about what should I record? And then I realize, oh, I can talk about this or this or this, or this thing happened to me today or whatever. Like I had an incident where I was driving downtown. I drive a Range Rover. I'm really proud of it. I worked really hard like to have this car. It was one of my dream cars. I'm driving in the downtown. Some guy walks in front of me and flips me the bird. And it happens a lot. (laughs) And I was like, what must he be thinking about who I am for him to do that? And I was fascinated by that. And I did a podcast episode about it. That is part of why so many of the women I work with have visibility issues because they're afraid to put themselves out there because of what people are going to say or think or do. I have women come to me who are like, I've hit an income ceiling I've plateaued. I want to make more money. There's no way I could ever make as much money as my husband. I'm like, what? What? (laughs) No, we have these things. I have women and this has happened to me. It's happened to people I know. It's happened to clients. It's happened to you. It's like, I don't want to put myself out there because it's not safe. On a subconscious level, we literally don't feel safe to use our voice. Whether there's ancestral trauma there, childhood trauma there, whatever beliefs that were instilled from our parents we don't want to put ourselves out there that's a problem we've been quiet long enough we need to use our voices and it is okay to give yourself permission to want more in life i also have clients who are like i would love to make more money But then is that going to take away from my family? Is that going to make me a bad person? Is it because this is what they've been taught to believe more money. One doesn't get rid of your problems. I hate to break it to you. And two, more money doesn't make you an asshole unless you're already an asshole. Then you're just an asshole with more money. But like, think about the beliefs we've heard. Rich people are evil. Rich people are greedy. I heard that growing up. I come from a very blue collar family. 
with no entrepreneurs. <laughs> so like, for me to step into this and work through all these beliefs using the tools I use now with people, it was a thing. Like I had to work through my own shit. I still have to work through my own shit. We always are going to have shit to work through. We are like seven layer burritos. There's something delicious and interesting on every layer. <laughs> well, now I'm thinking about burritos, but I, and I love that every time I hear you say that, I'm like, or every time I go get a burrito, I think about that. I'm like, Oh, oh I love what, what layers am I putting on my burrito today? Because I hate onions and I, I hate this. I'm like, I don't want to peel back an onion. I will peel back that outside and I will gladly eat the burrito, but I am not tackling the stinky onion. But it's funny because I used to say we're like onions and there's multiple layers, but a, an onion layer, they're all the same layers. And that's not how we are. We can have a belief that we're working through and then we feel good about it. And then like five years later, when you go to uplevel your business, this money mindset thing comes back. But in a completely different way. But if you've worked with me, now you can recognize it and you can work through it easier. But it's like, I want to give people the tools to be able to recognize this stuff. So when it comes up, you can work through stuff faster. But that's it. We are seven layer burritos. Every layer is different and they will show up differently. And if you're like most people, you're not going to get the exact same thing on your burrito every time. (laughs) So yeah, it's we humans are amazing. Our minds are amazing. We're amazing. It's just we've been taught and programmed to doubt ourselves. When we came into this world as babies, we didn't believe anything. All that shit was programmed into us. And you can program it out of you. You can unlearn stuff. That's pretty fucking amazing, don't you think? I think it's, yeah. I'm I'm here yeah. for it. I'm unlearning. Right? I'm in my unlearning stage right now. Huge unlearning. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to be turning 50 this year which I don't feel 50. I feel like I'm maybe like 35, but like, I'm still on learning stuff. I'm still learning who I am. I'm still learning to show up authentically as me because I've just re- realized over the past few years who I actually am because I started to work through those visibility blocks. <laughs> it's like, oh, so that's who I am. Cool. <laughs> and that was through storytelling. I would tell stories And explain things and people would be like, oh, that's really cool. So that's why you do that. I'm like, huh? Yeah, that is why I do that. I love it. That's why I love my podcast. I'm going to say, and I think that that's why your podcast is still going. And it started out in this like sporadic, I'll do when I want, like throw a spaghetti on the wall. I think there was a, there was a, an unfolding of the burrito. Like what new toppings do I want? I'm like, wait a minute. First off, people change their toppings. I am a creature of habit. But I kind of like that the, let's change up the insides or maybe put a different sauce on it. Mm. Yeah, it's like even if you drive the same way every day, go a different way. If you brush your teeth with your right hand, try brushing your teeth with the left hand. Change shit up. That's how we start to create new behaviors. And that's how we start to create new beliefs. <laughs> like, yes, it is based on emotions and feelings and all the things. But if we're the challenge I see is people get so hyper focused on I have to only focus on my feelings and that's going to help me change my beliefs. Or I have to focus only on this or I have to no, it's a big freaking, it's a big burrito. It all goes together. Can you eat each piece individually? Yeah, but it tastes way damn better. If you shove it all in a freaking tortilla and shove it in your mouth that way, tastes better. What I do is whole body. It's your mind. It's your body. It's your energy because it all goes together. We cannot have lasting transformation without the whole thing. (laughs) And I'm also a hand talker. (laughs) And I love that. And, you know, for the podcaster, because we know the podcasters are listening, this burrito analogy is perfect because this is why this podcast has gone from, what was it? We started as the podcast about podcasting. Then we went into podcast monetization strategies and then we went into the cure for pod fade. And now we're your podcast as someone's life raft because my burrito got boring. Yeah. It's or okay soggy. to switch up your burrito. Ooh, soggy Like burritos. if you don't eat the burrito fast enough, it gets soggy and gross. But what's also interesting is I've listened to some of your new episodes and from an energetic point of view, they're way stronger because you're actually tapping into your authentic self. And that's powerful. And it's just like when I'm working with people, 
will be looking at like the content they're creating or the sales pages because things aren't working. I'm like, because this isn't even your voice. This is even you. It's like when people get mad because somebody's trying to copy them. And I used to get mad. Whatever, man, there's only one you. Nobody, people can copy your content, but it's not going to come across the same because it's not your energy. It's not authentic. Energy speaks before your mouth even opens. (laughs) You can feel it. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So I had a mentor because one of my things is like, you know, like we're too powerful to be a ripple ripple. So let's be a tsunami of change. And all of a sudden I started seeing her using the word tsunami in it and it was not resonating to people. And then it just fell off. And I'm like, that's because of the way that I say it. When I say a tsunami of change, people are like, that's crazy. And I'm like, no, that's what I feel because we've got the ripple makers and we've got the tsunami generators. And you're exactly right. It's that we're so worried. This is a great analogy for podcasting too. We're so worried that it's saturated. Podcasting first off isn't saturated, especially when you look at the numbers in comparison to like every other platform that you're trying to stand out on. But the other thing is like, we can all be on our block. Like I live on a, on a circle and we have one style, two style homes. You can have a three bedroom or a four bedroom and they're, you know, kitty corner and flopped and whatever, but every single house looks different. Have a block party with the people on your block with all the same houses that look a little bit different. There's space for you. There's a lot for you. There's a space for you. And if people try to steal your stuff, like, good luck. Good luck trying to use the word tsunami. And you know what? I don't know. I'd rather be a tsunami generator personally. That excites me. When I hear you saying that, I'm like, yeah, I want to be a tsunami generator. (laughs) I don't want to just create a ripple. Ripples are boring. I'm like, I want to come in and I want to hit people in the face so hard because I'm also a fire hose. I'm like, I think about like a tsunami coming in and it's just like you hit somebody so hard that it knocks them over and it takes out their whole, ex- like everything that's in their minds. This is what you do with people. Mm-hmm. You knock out everything in their mind. You shake it up. The wave pulls back everything that's not firmly attached and you get to re-freaking build. Yeah, that's the coolest part. <laughs> you get to create your limitless life. Like you get to do it. And we can't build a limitless life or business on a a foundation of shit. A house won't stand on a big pile of poop. You have to excavate first. And that's where the subconscious mind stuff comes in. That's where the energetic works comes in. You have to have a solid foundation. It's (laughs) you just do. I mean, can you be successful without it? Sure. But it's going to be way harder. I've lived through the way harder. It wasn't fun <laughs> doing that for the last eight years. It's not fun. Yeah. I'm like, oh, this is, I don't like the way harder's not comfortable. I'd rather be connected to myself, be able to make intuitive decisions, be able to do the things that I really love to do because it feels good. But also knowing that when you're creating the things you love, like you said, if you build it, they will come. That's where the money comes from. And so having a podcast and being able to share your story and talk about things, it's powerful. Like podcasts are more than a ripple. Podcasts amplify. Podcasts generate the tsunamis. If you do them and actually promote them, not like I did in the beginning, but you know what I mean? It's powerful. Podcasts are amazing. And I will say this though. Just like anything else, you have to do what makes you feel good. And podcasts are not for everybody. Hence, pod fade. People do them. They get into them. They realize, holy shit, this is actually a lot of work. I don't actually like this. Peace out. So, I mean, you have to do the things you like to do. Don't just start a podcast because we're sitting here going, I love podcasting. It's a lot of time. It's a lot of energy. And depending on how you do it, it can be an investment. But I mean, it is fun. (laughs) It's a tsunami legacy. And I think it's like I said, we were talking about earlier, like it's a great way to connect with people. I would have never met Tiffany if I, which is one of the mutual acquaintances why we ended up in LA together. I would have never met her without my other friend's podcast. I met her through a podcast. I went on a retreat with her, you know, five years later, she's like, Hey, work with this person. And my podcast has built my business and I haven't promoted, like you rarely hear me say anything. I know I was going to mention that. but <laughs> I don't promote, but 
the thing is, is that right now I am so incredibly busy because of word of mouth, because of the connections I've made it and the community that I have built because of my podcast, it saved my life and it's provided me with enough. So are you going to start hearing me promote soon? Yeah, because there's some new stuff coming out that's going to be around your story as someone's life raft, my book, there's going to be something to help that that is coming, but I haven't needed to expand and come hang out on my wait list. I mean, that sounds shitty. So I've just been building my network, sitting back. Somebody told me like build for the future you want, network for the yeah. future that you want. And it's like, that's that's what podcasting has been to me. It's like, I needed humans around me. It's the easiest way, come hang out on the show. And I'm gonna say one thing that that I'm gonna kind of break break what you said a little bit, that podcasting as a host is not for everyone. Yes, Podcasting as a guest is for everyone that has a story and we all have a story. Yeah, I totally agree with that. So all those people that pod faded out, maybe it's time to shift your strategy of like, okay, how can I connect and still be on other people's shows and then be a good damn guest? Like if you're on somebody's show and you have no way to like do like a podcast swap or whatever, promote it. Like, I don't Mm -hmm. care if you put in your stories for a day, like be excited for the shows that you're on because it's work. If you want to be a guest, because we are looking for guests all the time, don't just send me some random shit from some PR agency that's on a PDF and tell me, so-and-so would be a great guest for your podcast. Here's 50 topics. No, if you want to be a guest on my show, like reach out to me. You can email me, but have a friggin' idea of what you want to, what do you want to share? Why would you, how would you benefit people? How can you help the people? Because again, it's not just about you. It's about how are you helping the people? If you come to me and you're like, hey man, here's based on like what you talk about in your audience, here's three topics that I think would be great to help your audience. I'm all over that. I'm like, yeah, great. If you send me some generic shit, yeah, I don't, I don't love that. So did you hear that? If you would like to be on the Limitless Life podcast with Brenda Johnston, please reach out to her at. Well, the f- best way to reach me actually is on Instagram and just send me a DM. And then if I'm like, oh, cool, because I like to have a conversation, then I'll hook it up and we'll have like a bigger conversation. It's just so interesting to me how many generic proposals I get with no heart, no energy. And I'm just like, no, <laughs> I'm very particular about who I bring on my show because I want a specific energy. I want authentic people. I want people who, when my audience listens to it, they're like, oh my, whoa, that blew my mind. That's what I want. Yeah. I think that's what we all want. And I mean, this, this is the conversations that I, that I want to stir up in the podcasting industry is that it really, we want to make money from our show, but the side effect is the money, the Mm -hmm. side effect of your show. Like we all hear the nasty side effects of medication, but like the side effect of serving is income. <laughs> like mm-hmm. it is cash money because people trust you. And you're like, oh, I have this really cool bottle here. Do you want to buy it? And somebody's like, oh yes. I don't I don't know what's in the bottle, but Jen said it was good, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's how like my business is built. It's like, it doesn't have to be as complicated. You don't have to be a multi, like, the, the people that are like, you need to chop your episode into all these different things and put it on every single platform. And it's like, it's so exhausting. You don't have to do that to be successful. Period. Do you know End why my podcast isn't on YouTube? Because that doesn't feel good to me right now. And I was, I went through this phase where it was like, oh, everybody's going on YouTube. I got to do that too. And I sat with it and I was like, nope, that doesn't actually feel good to me. I don't want to do it. And I'm not going to do it. Not right it's now. So anyways, annoying. eventually maybe. But like, that's not my priority right now. And it's still growing and it's still connecting and it's still serving and it's still getting people to reach out to you saying, hey, I'd I'd like to work with you. Yeah. (laughs) So you don't, it doesn't have to be as complicated. And if you're in that overwhelm, burnt out, completely lost yourself in the hustle of, you know, sometimes it's even better to like, everyone's like wants to repurpose, but you know how much time it takes to like grab little clips and all that go to your plot if you're going to do that kind of thing just repurpose by saying it again to the 
face the camera and like posting it because it's that's a literally what I've started it. doing. I said that to my my communications person. I was talking to her. I'm like, you know, I used to sit and like grab. Obviously, if it's a guest interview, that's different. But like when it's solo episodes, I would sit and try to grab the things, and I'm like, nope. Now I just make. I know exactly what I said. I have a I written down what I want to say. And I create the audiogram or I'll create a little video that looks like it's a piece of the podcast because that is way easier for me. And so hearing you say that makes me go, oh, see, that is okay to do that. Yeah. And I think that that, that's one of the things is everyone's like repurpose, repurpose, repurpose. But sometimes like repurposing is recreating because the recreating the micro content from a long form content. You have a topic for a week. When I drop Mm -hmm. this podcast episode, what do you think I'm going to be talking about all week? subconscious mind the power of your words it's an entire freaking week it could be entire month years of content I mean that's like it in your jam it's it's your entire content plan but it gives you enough to not like this is the one thing that I think that like it's the burnout and I get back to that fantasy marketing where some you know like Susie's like do this 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 and you'll make all this money and it's like it's repurposed. People feel that energy. It all comes back to to your area of expertise is energy. And then, you know, there's the whole people get burnt out and overwhelmed, which is a lot of the women I work with, because people are saying things like, well, you're not in your feminine energy enough. You're too masculine. And so then they get hyper-focused on the feminine energy. It's like all of our energy is part of us. It's not, I'm not in my feminine or in my masculine. It's a part of me. We work together. Me, the human with the higher consciousness should be in control of my own energy. That's why the four and a half minute thing is a daily energy management practice. It clears you off. It connects you and it protects you. That's why you feel so good using it. So many people come like, I feel overwhelmed and And I'm anxious because you're collecting everybody else's shit and you're trying to do things that don't feel good to you, but you can't even recognize that it doesn't feel good to you because you don't even manage your own energy. I'm very passionate and just went on a rant there. (laughs) And that's perfect. And I mean, if you are so spun out, that's not getting you anywhere. You're already not productive. So why the hell not take four minutes to bring yourself back? So for sure, that will be the top listed thing. When you go down to the show notes, it's the very first thing you're going to see and you will click on it right now. I'm telling you, it's in your ear. I am subconsciously telling you right now, you're taking your phone out of your pocket while you are walking the dog. You are clicking that button. You are putting your name and your email in and you will do that when you get back from your walk before you do your next thing and you'll see that energy difference because it makes a huge difference. Huge, huge difference. And it's not woo-woo, it's science. We're energetic beings. And then that, and that's the truth. So if you are ready to live your limitless life, we got it. We got to clean up that energy. Yeah. You gotta, and you got to help over to Brenda's podcast because, you know, she's going to help you. And every month she does drop something special for you that you should use on repeat. You know, I was actually just going to say, we should link up one of the monthly affirmations for people to use because I am going to start talking about those more because they are some of my highest downloaded things. There's no promotional stuff. There's no, it's literally just affirmations and it's 11 to 12 to 13 minutes long, depending. You can have them in the background playing. You can play them in your car, in the shower, on your walks. People love listening to them on their walks. If you listen each month, I have a specific theme. If you listen to them for the entire month, You're going to notice a difference in how you feel and think. Why not? What's the worst thing that could happen if you try it? It makes you feel better. It's free. And you don't even have to give your name or email for it because it's part of your podcast. So those will be the top two things in the show notes. You will have the energy mantra affirmations of the month. I'm going to just call them that because I I know they have a special name that I don't remember. The yeah, they're moment. different every month. This, I think February's was about manifestation. I have wealth ones, prosperity ones, health ones, creativity ones, taking your power back. They come out on the first of every month. So yeah, we'll just link to the most recent one because it's actually a really good one. I mean, they're all yeah. really good, but this one's doing really well. <laughs> and that one, you don't even have to pause for four no. minutes. But if you can't pause for four minutes, you are wound way too tight and nothing's going to work for you anyways. So 
Let's get that energy back on track. Let's get people listening to your show. Let's get you serving so that your side effects can be that cash money. And let's generate a fucking tsunami. <laughs>